Welcome to this second quick guide in the series. Today, this is a much requested quick guide on how I go about painting white. Specifically in this video, I'm going to be covering how I paint white uniforms, so the trousers and jackets and so on, as opposed to uh, the straps. As you can see, I'm going to use this plastic French uh, Perry casualty figure, and I've already painted the majority of the details, including these bits here, which are white straps. They're done slightly differently to the process I'm about to show you, but as we go along I'll describe the differences in how I go about painting those to make them a distinctly different colour um, of white, or not that distinct depending on your point of view, uh, to the white uniform elements which are going to come out a slightly different white-grey colour. First thing to show you is that I'm going to be using these paints by and large. Um, they're all Vallejo model colours, there's deck tan, light grey, pale grey, blue and white grey. And the first thing that I'll say is, at no point am I going to paint these uh, trousers or any other uniform parts white. Certainly not straight off, white grey will be the top highlight only and slightly watered down at that. So the first thing I'm going to do over the uh, grey base coat is going to mix a little bit of light grey into deck tan. Then once we've mixed that together, I'm just going to apply that liberally all over the existing base coat. And this is going to give us a nice uh, foundational tone to work up from. I'm not being particularly careful about any of the details or creases at this stage. This is just to give us something to work from with the next colour. Um, so next we're going to um, use again deck tan. It's the um, basis of the colour scheme that I like to use. And this time we're going to use a little bit of um, pale grey blue mixed into that. Much less deck tan, more pale grey blue, and a little bit of white grey just to begin to help lighten that tone out. And then that's going to be applied to the miniature, but this time uh, as a sort of broad highlight, so leaving the deepest recesses. And this is really going to help enhance that colour tone. Um, this counts as that sort of second thin coat in inverted commas, but it's, it's slightly lighter. I can't give you too much exact advice about how to mix the colours that I've used here or whatever colours you're choosing to use to try and um, emulate this technique if you do. I basically find that I mix them slightly differently every time I come to do a batch of um, white uniforms, which is no bad thing. I don't necessarily want um, complete uniform consistency across a unit or even a set of units. In addition, I'm about to apply a second layer. Now you can, depending on what you want to do and how much patience you've got, use as many layers as you want, making them progressively lighter. Here I'm using the same three colours that I showed before, but I'm using the smallest amount of deck tan, um, a bit more pale grey blue, and the bulk of this colour layer is going to be the white grey, because that's what we're trying to achieve is not going to a, p a pure tone in inverted commas of white grey, but getting a progressively lighter tone that isn't that brilliant white colour that's going to look a bit off white, a bit dirty and a bit, bit more like a fabric that's been on campaign or that's been made. And as you can see here as the video speeds up, I'm just applying that to the most raised areas and trying to leave a little bit more of the previous colour layer showing through. This is quite a subtle effect because you're putting in several layers that, that perhaps even in this video don't seem very distinct. I promise you that they are in real life. Um, but that's what builds up that nice through tone through the colours before you apply that top highlight of white grey on only the most raised areas. Clearly if there were a miniature you're painting like the Italians that I've painted or Saxons or Austrians, you'd want to apply this process to the jackets as well and it's exactly the same. I've just chosen to use this miniature because it's quite convenient um, and it's going to form the basis of a little uh, command diorama for my Prussians. So there you go, that's it after having had that layer applied. And now the final stage, um, and you can do as many before this as you like, is to take the white grey by itself and apply it to only the most raised areas to help pick out the details. So as you can see here, along those creases in the um, fabric that have been moulded. And it also depends on the way that the miniature has been sculpted. So in this case you can see there's a slight seam down one side of the trousers. On the Italians that I painted there are distinct folds, creases and what would be construction lines in the real quote fabric and you want to highlight around those along lines and in slightly blocky ways just to pick out those raised highlights. And the white grey itself is not a strong white tone, 
It's not a pure white tone. Um, so it's ideal um, to use for this process. And I'd also recommend watering it down slightly as well just to help it spread. Because if you've got things like um, the knees, for example, of a miniature that's walking forwards, if you water down the white grey and just spread it slightly on the on the knee where the where the leg is meant to be bent and would thus be pushing forwards against the fabric, you're creating a natural, a soft highlight using the watered down version of the paint. And that's it. That's the whole process. As you can see, I've only used four colours. To be honest, you could well have just used three. The basis for the whole thing, at least to begin with, is, is deck tan over that um, medium grey uh, base coat that I used. You can use any medium grey. I think I used medium sea grey from Vallejo. So start with deck tan and add a little bit of um, pale grey blue or a light grey into it as your sort of first tone and then gradually lighten that up, taking out the deck tan and grey colour and adding in a little bit more white grey, as many layers as you wish to do to get the effect you want, and then make sure that you finish off only in the most raised areas with the top colour that you've picked. What I'm going to show you here is for the straps, I go up from deck tan to this silver grey colour and then to off-white to pick out the edges and, and, and crisscrosses and most raised highlights. And that's the difference, because it's a completely different tone. You can also use other paints, as seen here. So there's a Nakar, that's quite a nice tone to work with from uh, Scale 75, and also that Citadel Pallid White Flesh. These are just different things you can use uh, as the basis for the colour scheme that you're going to work up from. Um, but it's really up to you. I mean, have a, have a mix and match with what techniques and what paints work best for you as this is just a handrail for you to follow describing the process that I use. Anyway, I hope you found this guide helpful uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.